Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we got a lot of things to go over. And first up, money is pouring out of gold into Bitcoin. And this one actually goes pretty deep. We're going to take a look at physical gold versus ETF and what is going on in the entire market. Also, Bitcoin miners in the China's Yunnan province is cut off from electricity supply, thereby hindering production of Bitcoin in that area. So the question gets asked, was Brad Garlinghouse right when he told Anthony Pompliano that the CCP controls everything as far as Bitcoin mining? And finally, how great is Voyager? First off, they sent this message that said that the Voyager team is going to postpone scheduled maintenance because of the actions that are happening in the market. And as that happens, Coinbase goes down. So we'll get into all that, but first, just as a reminder, today is a Bitcoin Tuesday giving day. I think this is like some new thing that's uh, uh, popping up, but hey, I like to give things, I like to give the charity. If you've been on the channel for a while, you know that I give to pretty much two donations. Uh, one of those is Dog is My Co-Pilot, where they take dogs that are in high kill shelter areas and they transport them over to areas of the United States which don't have high kill and have a large demand for dogs. Plus the Ugandan Water Project, which provides safe and accessible drinking water to kids and the community in Sub-Saharan Africa. So let's just do that right now, right? Let's uh, click donate. We'll do 50 bucks. 50 bucks is good. I'll cover the processing fee. Sure. Submit. Ask for my donation details, which I will hide. And bang, one of two is done. Let's jump over to the Ghana Water Project. So this one is hosted at uh, thegivingblock.com. I'll link this in the description. And it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is uh, you can scroll down, you can do a search, but it's always on the front page right here. Donate crypto. And let's do 0 0.01, which is like 200 bucks. So great. Click continue. And then I can fill this out. Or I'm just gonna donate anonymously. It's faster. Continue. Then I'm gonna jump my phone to the Voyager app. I'm gonna click on the little, little guy in the top left-hand corner, which is me. I'm going to click on transfer cash or crypto and I'm going to go to withdraw from Voyager account. I'm going to click Bitcoin and then easy peasy. All I do is just click on the QR code right there and I'm going to scan that guy right there. 0 0.01, 192 and I'm going to slide to withdraw Bitcoin. Get my uh, two factor authentication code. Sure. Confirm. And it's going to say just to check my email, which I'll do that right now. And I'll just scroll down right there, confirm withdrawal. Bam, done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's as simple as that. All right, let's jump into today's market. All right, so let's see what we got. So today is the 1st of December. It looks like it is around 10 a.m. Texas time. And what do we got? Well, Bitcoin's doing pretty good. I mean, still, I mean, we haven't hit that 20,000, but uh, I think we're gonna hit it next week. And uh, I have uh, no uh, data to support that whatsoever. <laughs> it's just a hunch. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Ethereum uh, up above 600, I'm pretty happy at that. XRP is down 2%, but still magnificent run. I can't take any away from XRP, great run. Tether is uh, around 19 billion for the market cap. So let's see an audit. Litecoin, 90 bucks. Uh, man, Litecoin holders is in the fifth place. Whoever is holding Litecoin, congratulations. I, don't, I sold that a long time ago. But uh, after that PayPal announcement, where it's uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin, I mean, great, congratulations to all those holders. And Bitcoin Cash, Cardano is down 5%, uh, whatever. But Cardano, uh, I'm still working on the uh, staking pool. I'll let everybody know it's a progress. It is not easy, I will just say that. It's a real pain in the tail, but I am persistent and stubborn AF, so I will get it done. Uh, what else? 5% now for Stellar. Eh, 4 so not really anything's too fantastic, but we are hitting a nice little market cap of 580 billion. So let's see if we can top out at 600. Now what I want to see is how everything compared to Bitcoin. So I'm going to switch this over to Bitcoin and let's see how the alts did uh, as, as compared to if you just would have invested in Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's zero, zero, right? Ethereum be up uh, 1%. That's pretty good. Hey, 1%. Uh, just the same as if you would have gone to Tether. Litecoin though is the big winner, 6%. Again, I think Litecoin is doing fantastic. I think it's doing fantastic because if you're on the pay on your PayPal account, you take a look at like, well, I can't afford Bitcoin because that's, I mean, that's way too much for me and people don't even realize you can buy a fraction of it. Then Bitcoin Cash is too much too. Ethereum's way out of your ballpark. And then of course you look at Litecoin, you're like, well, maybe that's the next one. And then you're like, I'll just buy that. So what else we got? Uh, USD coin, uh, Monero, always doing well. NEM, congratulations, NEM. Uh, one point out, yeah, yeah. Again, right now, really the safe, the safe bet 
is Bitcoin. That doesn't mean that all coin holders like myself and you aren't going to do fantastic later, just what it is right now. So anyhow, that's what we got. Let's jump into today's top stories. So this one, this one's good and it goes deep. Money pours out of gold in favor of Bitcoin. And really what's going to talk about is Wall Street players, institutional investors, and why they're dumping gold for Bitcoin. However, we're going to get into the weeds of it and it's going to get kind of sticky. So just be prepared and buckle up. So what's going on? Bitcoin and gold are being seen less as bedfellows and more as potential adversaries. I guess you can say that, but I see them both as both stores of value. I don't think that uh, people really are into Bitcoin because it's going to go up, you know, or sorry, gold is going to go up astronomically. That's not what gold is for. Gold is just a hedge against the, the craziness that is the market. Bitcoin is the asymmetrical uh, return. So I think if you want huge gains, I mean, gold's not going up 10x, 50x, 100x. That's just ridiculous. But according to analysis on the precious metals market by JP Morgan Chase, 93 tons of precious metals have been dumped by bullion-backed funds worth some $5 billion since November 6th. And this is going to go right in line with a Stansbury research video where the interviewer talks about how she has talked to some of her contacts in the gold industry, and she actually does confirm that. We'll take a look at that in a second. But it goes on to state that Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, the on-ramp for institutional investors to gain exposure to Bitcoin, has doubled since August. Grayscale has been hovering around uh, Bitcoin and getting all he can get his hands on. Just this week, it added it added 7,300 Bitcoin worth 140 million. That's nothing to sneeze at. And it's interesting because Grayscale actually owns 500,000 plus Bitcoin. I mean, even more now. This was uh, November 16th. So they're almost, I mean, if things keep going, they're going to own a million worth of Bitcoin. Now, again, they don't own it. They buy it for the people that want to invest into it, these institutional players. But remember, the reason why Grayscale is doing so well is because these some of these institutions, or all institutions, they, they, they can't hold Bitcoin. They can't just you know hold it like you and me. Uh, there's regulations against that. So they have to pay a premium. And that premium is pretty hefty. Right now, if you look at ycharts.com, this is the uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. And you're looking at around 16, 17%. And it's been pretty high. It's been as high as 41% uh, in February. So that's just one of those things that they got to pay for because they're like, well, we know it's going to go up. I mean, we're not idiots, but uh, we can't hold it right now. So we're going we're gonna to pay Grayscale. So there's a reason why Grayscale is buying it all up. And Grayscale is doing that with Ethereum. They're doing that with XRP. They're doing that with Litecoin, a lot of different other cryptocurrencies. So don't be surprised. They're making a lot of money. So then moving down, it states gold was really the safe asset of the past world and baby boomer generation. John Mark states, a former commodities hedge fund manager, now it's being replaced by automated assets like Bitcoin. So this is what people are always talking about. They're like, this bull run is different because there are so many institutional players getting into the game. So it's just totally different. And it is, but it isn't. So you have to remember that, yes, institutions are going to drive mass adoption because there's going to be a lot of money into it and they're going to advertise for it and they're going to talk to all their clients about it. However, there are still some sound fundamentals you can never forget. One of those is don't FOMO, don't let emotions run you, and then also just be careful because you don't want to just dump all at once. And this is one of those things where I, I'm very worried that people are like, you know what, it's different, so I'm just going to go all in. And that's not it. I mean, even plan B, uh, the guy for the stock to flow ratio uh, model, he talks about, he goes, yeah, Bitcoin's gonna go to the moon, but we're gonna see some massive, massive drawbacks up to 35%. And that's a lot of different uh, analysts have said the same thing. So if you think it's just gonna go straight up, it's not. And if you're like really going for it, it's just relax and just, uh, you know, be a little bit more level headed. And actually this is one of the things I talk about when I was on uh, Alex Maschioli's show yesterday. And uh, it was me and the usual suspects and everybody was in a good mood except for me. I'm like the eternal wet blanket and uh, I'm here and I'm just talking to everybody's like, it's going to be great and da da da. And I'm like, wait, it's not. It's going to suck. It's going to be there's going to be problems. And everybody's like, God damn it, Rob, you just just be happy for once. And I am happy. I'm a happy person. Really, I am. It's just <laughs> it's just that on this show, I was just like, just be careful because dollar cost average, be an investor and da da da. I know people hate that I say that thing time and time again. But again, the more things change, the more they stay the same. All right. So moving down, uh, there's some more important information, which is uh, people like BlackRock Chief Investment Officer Rick Ryder told CNBC that the currency is here to stay. 
and that it has so much more functional than passing a bar of gold around. And if you don't know, BlackRock uh, is a small company with uh, seven and a half trillion assets under management. So whatever they say pretty much carries weight. And that's really where smart money is talking about. Then it goes on to state that I've changed my mind, wrote Sanford C. Bernstein strategist Inigo Fraser Jenkins in a report Monday. Bitcoin won't replace gold, but there's room for both, he said, especially if the future of inflation and extreme debt levels. And if you don't know, Bernstein Research was bought up by the Alliance Group, and now it's called Alliance Bernstein, and they have a, a small $631 billion asset center management. So again, more smart money talking. And lastly, it states, it would be churlish, it's a good word, to think that the $5 billion less gold sitting in investment funds has been transferred straight to Bitcoin. If that were the case, Bitcoin's price would be up in the 30,000s. So this is actually going to what Grant Williams, he is the co-founder of Real Vision, and he's talking to Daniela here about different aspects as far as gold. He talks about the definition of gold bugs, uh, also gold ETFs versus physical gold, and it's the same thing actually that uh, my friend Wynn Mullet talked about, because I had sent a tweet out and he said, no, 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 I, we're talking about Ralph Powell, and he said, Powell sold ETFs, he didn't sold physical gold, and I was like, man, okay. Uh, but Grant really breaks it down pretty well, and I just want to delve into this quickly. For, for me, I think you have to you have to take a step back and, and first of all define what a gold bug is, okay? Because there's there's two very different ways to look at this. If you were really looking for the price of gold to go up and you're interested in price uh, speculation in gold, then you're going to be incredibly frustrated because you know all the charts said it was going higher. The charts now will tell you it's going to go lower, um, and it's certainly. Um, you know, it's failed at that 2100 level. It's gone back through 2000. And now if you look at the charts and the breakdown, it could go back to $1,700. So if you, if you are a gold bug, um, and I, I use the pejorative version of that term because what, what a gold bug is in the pejorative is someone who's just fixated on gold and thinks the gold price is going to go to 10000 et cetera, et cetera. If that's you, you've had a rough few weeks. Um, there's no two ways about it. If you have gold in your portfolio as protection against um, financial malfeasance by central banks, um, inflation, all the things that gold does for you, the price doesn't really matter, right? You're still on your gold. Uh, from the year 2000, you're up almost 600% on it. Um, and, and if it's a long-term holding, if it's a portfolio allocation, this stuff is just noise. It doesn't, it doesn't make that much difference. So, for me, I, yes, I look at the, the, the chart, I look at what's happened with interest, um, but am I sweating the fact that it, it, it failed at 2000, it's back down? I, honestly, I'm not. It doesn't cause me any lack of concern. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's why I hold gold and silver. Not because I think it's going to go up massively, because it's not. It can't. It, that, that, it doesn't work like that. Cryptocurrencies, digital assets like Bitcoin can, and that's why I hold them. And somebody asked me, they said, well, will you ever get rid of all your gold? I'm like, no, that's not the point. The point is to have a hedge against, you know, a catastrophe. And that's why I hold it. And Bitcoin and, and all my other different holdings I hold because they're going to go up like 10, 50, 100x. That's the whole point. And I think people got this message skewed because of some, some various gold bugs out there saying it's going to go to the moon, which is just ridiculous. So I think... The best thing here is just to, you know, understand like what they're actually good for. And that's just how I see it. Again, I could be wrong, but let me show you the link in the comments section. But now we're going to get into uh, liquidating gold for Bitcoin and why uh, Grant here says, no, it's not the case. I called a few of my sources at various uh, bullion desks and the feedback I, I, I was hearing is that a lot of clients were calling in saying, hey, they want to liquidate their gold to buy Bitcoin. And, and, and we're seeing quite a lot of that. If you... If you have a gold position, now I'd be interested if that was people with physical gold who were liquidating physical gold to own Bitcoin. I'd find that quite remarkable, to be honest with you, because there's a there's an additional uh, level of interest, there's an additional level of commitment in owning physical gold, which means you're not generally a price speculator. If you want to speculate on the price, you're going to buy the, the ETF, right? Um, so if you if you own physical gold, you've taken the extra step, you take made the extra commitment. To sell that to buy Bitcoin, I find very strange indeed, because you're you're selling out of an asset you own to speculate in the price of Bitcoin. If you're selling the ETF to buy Bitcoin, I, I totally understand that. It's FOMO. And that makes total sense. And that's why I like putting my cryptocurrency into an Analyzer. First, it keeps it safe, keeps it off the exchanges. 
Also, it, it allows me to have that second step that I have to do just to get it off to actually sell it. I'm like, eh, I'm not going to do it. And that's just one of those things. Good or bad, that's what I like about it. I will say this, though. I mean, there is one thing about uh, transferring gold, physical gold and ETFs, but people are still transferring money. And that is the big thing. So they're getting out of the whole universe that is gold and putting it into our universe, which is cryptocurrency. And that's the things I like to see. Let me think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, this is from beingcrypto.com. Go check them out. I've got a YouTube channel. And it says, uh, breaking Bitcoin miners in China's Yunnan province cut off from electricity supply. This was two hours ago. Actually, this was yesterday, uh, late at night, 7.30 p.m. And it states, uh, Chinese Bitcoin miners in the dark, according to multiple reports from Chinese crypto news. And uh, I don't speak Mandarin or Cantonese, so uh, I couldn't uh, read the article. But this was on Monday. The Yunnan province issued an order for power stations to cease supplying power to Bitcoin miners in the region. Yunnan is China's fourth largest Bitcoin mining hub after Xinjiang, Sichuan, and uh, Inner Mongolia. News marks the latest blah, blah, blah. So this actually goes back to what uh, there was an argument or a discussion uh, between Brad Garlinghouse from uh, the CEO of Ripple and uh, Anthony Pompliano. And the whole thing came down to they believe that uh, China could totally uh, disrupt the Bitcoin operation and the network because 60 plus percent of the mining pools are in China. It, it went back and forth, but basically it goes like this. So yes, China can definitely control any miners, any individual miners or mining pools that reside in China. No, they cannot control the mining pools or the miners, individual miners that live outside of China. Yes, those mining pools that comprise of a ton of individual miners, which are globally, uh, they can you know, shut down the pools themselves. But the individual miners that are outside uh, globally, they can't shut them down. Now, the ones that live in there, obviously, this is a prime example. The question that I have is how many individual miners that live in China and are hooked into these four pools and if they can easily unplug, because apparently it is, this is what miners tell me, if they can easily unplug from any mining pool in operation and plug into another one, first of all, how fast can they do it? And second of all, will they notice if there is a double spend or a 51% attack or whatever else? And if it does happen, can they just reject those blocks? So obviously, I don't have all the answers. And uh, if I do try to talk about them, it's kind of like a virgin talking about sex. So what I did was I went out to Voscoin. And Voscoin, if you don't know, he has a YouTube channel and he's huge into mining. He has a ton of different videos. This guy, I would consider an expert. So I reached out to him and I said, hey man, I got a bunch of questions about this and I, I wanna get an expert in there. And he says, hey man, happy to help. I can't do it today, but I'll definitely soon. What's your schedule like and da da da. So we're gonna set something up. I'm gonna get Voscoin over here and he's gonna answer all your questions about mining. Because again, I don't have all the answers. So uh, if you'd like to, just submit your questions in this video and I'll get Vosk on here and we'll talk all about it. But I will, before I take off, I, I wanna make mention of this. This, these are the, uh, this are the uh, Bitcoin info charts and this is the hash rate. So you have to understand, the hash rate is the computational power that is going on in the Bitcoin network at any given moment. So all the different uh, uh, rigs that are, that are connecting, this is how much hash rate it actually produces. The computational power and right now is a boatload just a ton right and i'm looking at uh, the last uh, six months or so and what you can see right here as we go to this we are looking at november 24th you can see it right over here uh this is now it's in june but uh so you take a look at november 24th 26th 7th 8th 9th 30th so there was a drop but it wasn't a huge drop like we saw back in october 27th also, there's other drops over here. The thing is, is that we don't see what it is right now. So it'll be interesting to see what exactly happens. And But one thing I, I would like to note is that this is uh, the six month, this is uh, bit info charts. Also, if we take a look at uh, blockchain.com, the charts, the hash rate, and we look at, oh, this is seven days. So, man, there's a huge drop off over here. I don't know what happened there, November 2nd, about a month ago or so. So if you look over here, not too bad, but let's just take a spade a spade, look at 60 days. Huge drop off November. We're still up here. So, and it doesn't even tell us yesterday. So I'd like to see exactly how much it drops off. And that will be the big determining factor. 
cutting them off, how much did they cut off, what actually happened to the hash rate. And of course, when the hash rate drops, the difficulty also drops. So this might actually be good for other uh, miners because they're like, hey, that's so many, so many rigs on here. Fantastic. Anyhow, let me just think of the comment section and don't forget to ask those questions so I can get to Vosk and then let's move on. Last up, I just want to say Voyager is fantastic. I like Voyager. I have no problems with Voyager. And uh, this is one of the reasons why I love them. So this is actually uh, sent to me by the worst the worst trader from Twitter. And uh, this was an announcement from Voyager. They said, hey, the Voyager team decided to postpone the scheduled maintenance due to the market's current performance and not wanting you to miss an opportunity. We'll alert you when maintenance has been rescheduled. We appreciate your patience as we set our sights on Bitcoin's record-breaking day. Thanks. And that is how you handle customer service. You go, look, we've got the things we need to do but you guys are way more important. This is the exact same thing that Steve has said both times he's been on the show. Steve is the uh, CEO of Voyager. He said, look, he goes, if I take care of the customers, it all flows from that. And that's exactly what's happened. And from this one, I just sent out a tweet. I said, hey, pay attention, Coinbase. This is how you handle things. Great job and invest Voyager. You guys get it. So if you can see that on the, on the Twitter, uh, give it a like because that's exactly how it is. Uh, Coinbase is like, nope. <laughs> We have no care about you guys. Customer service, good luck. And I know some people have said, hey, it's, Coinbase is the only uh, you know game in town, so don't bash it. Hey, I'm sorry you got a you know a, a, a bad exchange, but uh, hopefully when legislation comes down, you can find out just how awesome other things are. Uh, sorry, you're stuck in New York. Anyhow, so that's it for today. I know it was long. It was a lot of information coming on. I think uh, we're uh, headed for really good times. Just remember the fundamentals. Don't let your emotions control you. Don't FOMO in and just be careful. And that's the big thing. Also, before we take off, I just want to say thanks to everybody who signed up over at Digital Asset News. I really appreciate it. So I'll just give you some random shout outs. Eric Mitko, Carl Alden, Professor X, Broccoli Farts, always funny. Lucas Bradley, Tavi Macanau, uh, Sam Vasquez, Sergeant Crypto, he's also got a YouTube channel, check it out. And Jess Zadra. So again, thanks so much everybody for signing up. I appreciate it. Also, if you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let YouTube do its magic. And that's it for today. So again, thanks for sticking with me. Really appreciate it. Don't forget to uh, donate if you can. And I'll see you on the next one.